Hello everyone. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a question that was over on Discord asking about the ideal altitudes for Marine Patrol aircraft. So what I've done is I've set up a simple experiment and we'll kind of get to the whole, uh, what can you take away from this a little bit towards the end. So we have our tuple uh, our 95 RT. Uh, when I think of MPA aircraft, this is the aircraft that I think of. There's also the tuple F-142. Of course, you have your P-3, you have your P-8, you have your Shackleton. There's tons of really, really good MPA, but this is the one I always think of, mostly because the propellers are so incredibly loud or the engines and the propeller combination. You can hear them from underwater. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and flip on our little radar here, and uh, we're going to go for a little quick trip, and we're going to see if we can identify anything which happens to be in the ocean. Cruise along, cruise... Oh, pause. Aha! We've spotted something. So I'm going to go ahead and slow down time again. I'll go ahead and click on the sucker. And it looks like we have ourselves a target now. We detected a minute ago at a range of about 182 nautical miles. Cool. So what I'll do is I'll accelerate time to about 15x. So we'll just kind of keep an eye on that target for a little while. Getting closer, maybe trying to plan to identify it. It's not giving us any useful missions. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident. Oh, we picked somebody else up. What's this? There's another ship that happens to have about the same range. And we picked this one up at 161 miles and nearly 30 nautical mile difference. Now, you're probably sitting there going, okay, what's special? And uh, those of you who are very observant will immediately identify what's different about these two ships. One of them is facing towards us, and one of them is beaming us. As a matter of fact, these two ships are actually very special because they're both zoom vault and destroyers, uh, guided missile destroyers from the United States. The reason I picked these, as you can tell from looking at the picture real quick, is this thing was engineered to be stealthy in the front. And, uh, you know, obviously, if you look at it from the side, it's a pretty big, pretty normal flat ship here. So in this case, it took us a really, really long time to detect it facing straight. So um, overall, we picked up that aircraft. I should pick up that uh, ship, I should say. I should be more specific. Let's go ahead and click on it again at a distance of 161.3 nautical miles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly reset our scenario here. Looks good, looks good. Enter scenario, looks fine for me. Go ahead and flip on the radar. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank the altitude up to maximum altitude. So let's go ahead and flip on the radar again. Boop. And let's see what happens this time. There's our first. Let's see here, 195. And let's see what happens if we can pick up our second. There we are. We expected less than 161 or more than 161. Well, let's take a look. And we get a distance of, sorry about that, of 160.3. We actually picked it up sooner, even though we were at a higher altitude. You're going, oh, that's weird. Is that consistent? Well, let's take a look. I'll go back to uh, my little scenario again here. This time we'll go ahead and order him to come down to medium altitude. Flip on that big old radar and we'll let him rip along here. Notice his maximum detection radius has shrunk. Stop. Notice we picked up both of these targets at about the same exact distance. Actually, this one was picked up just slightly later than this one. You're wondering why? That's because the Earth is curved. If I actually zoom out a little bit, you can see this nice, beautiful curvature of the Earth. When we do reduce our altitude, we in effect reduced our radar's ability to see far because we were now seeing on the other side of that curve where those particular targets are. So in this case, we've actually seen that increasing the altitude improves our radar detection distance. So we're like, wow, okay, that makes sense. Obviously, you're dealing with something like this. So uh, what's the other extreme? Well, let's have a little fun with this. So I'm going to again turn my radar on. And this time I'm going to order him down to 25,000 feet. And let's see what happens to the size of his big circle. See the circle shrinking? Let's go order him back up to Thalsam altitude. Let's see what happens to his lovely circle there. Other way. Going up. There it goes. That circle's getting big now. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Also notice his range is increasing. Come on, give me that big circle. Bring it. Oh, just about that. Keep climbing, keep climbing. Notice it caps out, by the way. There is a maximum range of this particular radar. Keeps increasing, keeps increasing. And we should pick this guy up any moment now. Pause. Oop, there it is. Perfect. So you can see we picked up this guy at the exact same distance as we picked him up earlier. So what's the takeaway here? Well, the first one you have to remember is no matter what altitude you set your MPA, if you are using your MPA for the purposes of detecting a target, you have to remember that that target has to be visible. So if it's on the opposite side of the horizon, you can't actually detect it. The vice versa is actually a little bit more complicated. So let me go ahead and get my little uh, MS Paint here so I can show you what I mean. So the other problem is the surface area of the target. Do you remember that we were able to detect the target when we were up higher than when we were up below it? Well, for imagine for a second that I take myself my little airplane, I'm at low altitude, and again, this is my airplane. Let's grab my airplane up here and put him up at a high altitude. Let's say this is the beam he's creating. Again, this would be the world's most narrow radar beam. And let's say this is the beam that this guy's creating. I'm trying to keep these roughly the same, but you can see the difference. When you look at the beam coming down 
here and hitting this edge, you're actually deflecting some of the energy in opposite directions, which is actually changing the detectability of this surface. When you're hitting the beam right on the flat part of the ship like this, you're actually going to get the best return back. But remember, because the Earth is curved, you might run into a situation like this where you can't actually get that reflection on account of the fact that the physical geometry of the situation does not allow you to enable it. On the flip side, check this out. Let's say my aircraft is up here like this, looking like this. Yeah, you see that? We now have the ability to detect almost the entire massive surface area of the ship, which was why when we were testing it against the zoom vault, remember how the top of the zoom vault, it's like a little spiky thing like this, looks like this to the radar. From the front of the radar, it looks more, again, this is my ugly rendition here, looks more like this, obviously from the side, you know, you got this kind of a thing going here, which is why it was so easy to detect. Now, this equation gets a little bit more complicated than it appears. First thing, obviously, if I have a radar like this, which is one of the world's longest range maritime surveillance radars in existence, this gets a little more complicated if you're dealing with a lesser radar system. So what I've done here is I've taken an F-16, which does have the ability to do a surface search, and I've set up the exact same scenario. Now keep in mind, this version of the F-16, it only packs a more traditional, you know, mechanically scanned radar. We don't have any of that phased array fanciness here. So uh, we're dealing with uh, detecting things basically the old fashioned way. Now my F-16 is chilling up here at 36,000 feet. Keep in mind my two ships are right there. Let's go move him to the side a little bit. He's cruising along, he's cruising along, he's cruising along. Cruising along, oh, there we go. And now we're able to detect our first target at a range of about 42 nautical miles. Now, if I let this run a little bit longer here, I'll go back up to 15X. Notice that other zoom vault doesn't become visible until there when we detect them at a range of 35.3 nautical miles. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab this guy, I'm gonna pull him back, and what I'm gonna do is intentionally reduce his altitude. I'm also gonna drop these two targets for the purposes of my demonstration here. So we're gonna pop down to 12,000 feet. Notice it had no impact in the slightest on his detection range. Get a little closer. Whoops. <laughs> Get back there. I think he uh, ran out of fuel there. <laughs> You're not going back to Reykjavik, which is my terrible spelling of Reykjavik. Oh, that was funny. I can't believe I ran out of fuel like that. I'm actually going to delete this base because I don't actually need it. Yes, I know I spelled Reykjavik wrong. Put you back there. I'll go ahead and adjust my little experiment here. Let's see here. All right. Did we acquire anything? Nope. That's okay, though. You're supposed to be at 12,000 feet. Ah, you're still assigned. Unassigned, 12,000 feet. Gotta love it when it does stuff like that. There we go. But I wanted you to detect for the purposes of my experiment here, not detect for your silliness. Try again. <laughs> All right, there we go. So now we're at 12,000 feet. Remember, it's about 43 nautical miles when we first detected the target. Let's take a look now. 43 nautical miles. Exactly. Continue along, continue along, about 37 nautical miles on the other one. There's the other one. Make sure I pick the right guy here. Sung four, 30.2 nautical miles. So what had happened now is if you go back to my uh, very, very my crew drawing, which unfortunately I closed, you can see that because my aircraft was physically lower on the water, the very, 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 very small cross section became smaller because I'm not seeing any of the deck of the ship with my radar anymore. So uh, hopefully this answers some of the questions around, you know, the proper altitudes. I know you said a minute ago, I was like, wait, wait a minute. You were saying that we're supposed to be at seven, uh, about 7,000 to 12,000 feet. Well, that's because a lot of marine maritime, you know, search uh, patrol activity does not take place at high altitudes because you're trying to see things, not necessarily pick them up with radar. If we were only worried about picking them up with radar, you've already seen the optimal arrangement. But if we were trying to acquire a target visually, things get a little bit more complicated. So what I have here is that same bear we had seen earlier, and this time I've shut its radar off and we're chilling at 36,000 feet. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up time a little bit here, and we're gonna basically fly right over the tippy top of these two ships, and now watch what happens. Now the bear does have some pretty slick equipment on board to help facilitate this process. You know, you've got a little like camera turret and everything, you know, very, very much like a P3. It's also got a magnetic anomaly detector, assuming that you get close enough and everything pretty much along those lines. So now the problem we're going to be running into is to be able to physically, visually see the target, which remember, all vision is based on slant distance, which again, radar is based on slant distance as well, but this is a little bit more complicated. So there you see, we've immediately acquired one of the two ships, but we're not 100% confident about it. So we'll continue traveling, continue traveling, continue up, and now we've acquired the second ship. 
So we didn't visually acquire these until they were about six nautical miles away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab him. I'm going to go send him down to MPA altitude real fast. And I'll go ahead and drop these two ships from existence again. And now we'll see exactly what will happen this time. So again, we're trying to sneak up on these two ships. Go ahead and pause real quick. Unpause. We'll go sneak up like that. Cruising along. Remember, it was about five or six nautical miles before we were able to actually acquire that target. Cruising along, cruising along, getting pretty darn close. I'm trying to beat six nautical miles. A pause. Nice. We acquired them both at the same time at three nautical miles more. For those of you who do math quickly, that's a 1.6 times. It's almost 150% sooner that we detected them than when we were using our radar exclusively, in which case at the higher altitude, it actually made more sense. So what are the takeaways? The first one is you got to remember that at the end of the day, you have to be able to physically see it with whatever thing you're doing. Now, if there were clouds or something, we'd be hopeless here. But because we reduced our altitude, we decreased our slant distance, making it possible to visually acquire these targets sooner. Had we been up at 36,000 feet, we were basically right on top of them before we even began to come close to seeing them. Now, if it's nighttime, this gets more complicated. On the flip side, if you are using radar, get as high as you can to take advantage of that better cross-section that you can get. But other than that, enjoy.